When you fire up a grill for a weekend barbecue, you probably don't think too much about what those little black briquettes actually are or how they're made. They just seem to magically appear in a bag, ready to burn. But behind those small lumps of charcoal lies an interesting mix of chemistry, engineering, and even a bit of recycling. Believe it or not, charcoal briquettes are one of the most efficient and carefully engineered fuels we use today. So, how exactly are they made? Let's dive into the surprisingly meticulous process of turning wood waste into the perfect grilling fuel, right here on History of Simple Things. Charcoal briquettes aren't just pieces of burned wood. They're a manufactured form of charcoal, a fuel made by heating wood without oxygen to drive out moisture and volatile gases. What's left behind is almost pure carbon, which burns hotter and cleaner than regular wood. But while natural lump charcoal is simply chunks of carbonized wood, briquettes are different. They're made from a blend of charcoal powder binding agents, and other additives designed to make them uniform, slow-burning, and easy to handle. The goal is consistency. Every briquette should light up the same way, burn evenly, and provide steady heat for hours, something that's hard to achieve with irregular chunks of natural charcoal. That's why manufacturers go through a detailed process to make sure each one comes out almost identical in shape, size, and performance. Everything starts with wood, but not the kind you'd use for a campfire. Factories usually collect wood scraps, sawdust, or even coconut shells, depending on what's available locally. In many places, agricultural byproducts like rice husks or nutshells are also used making charcoal production a great way to recycle waste materials. These raw materials are then fed into a carbonization kiln. This kiln operates at high temperatures, typically between 400 degrees Celsius to 700 degrees Celsius in a low oxygen environment. Without enough oxygen, the wood can't catch fire. So instead of burning, it decomposes. The process drives off water, tar, and other volatile compounds, leaving behind blackened, porous chunks of charcoal. Once cooled, these chunks are crushed into fine charcoal powder, the main ingredient of the briquettes. This powdery carbon has excellent burning properties, but can't be used directly because it won't hold its shape. That's where binders and additives come in. To make the charcoal powder stick together, manufacturers mix it with a binding agent. The most common binder is starch, often made from corn, cassava, or wheat. It's natural, non-toxic, and becomes sticky when mixed with water, helping the charcoal particles cling together. But that's not all that goes into the mix. To make briquettes burn evenly and maintain their shape, other ingredients are added. For example, limestone or clay helps strengthen the briquettes and control the burn rate, while small amounts of borax can be used as a release agent to prevent them from sticking to molds. Some manufacturers also add a tiny bit of sodium nitrate or other oxidizing agents to make the briquettes easier to ignite. The ingredients are combined in large industrial mixers, creating a thick black paste with a dough-like consistency. This mixture is now ready to be shaped into briquettes. This is where the magic happens, where that dark paste turns into familiar pillow-shaped or hexagonal briquettes. The mixture is fed into a briquetting machine that compresses it under high pressure into uniform molds. The pillow-shaped ones are the most common and instantly recognizable. They're made by pressing the mixture between two rotating molds that form them into their iconic cushion-like shape. Meanwhile, hexagonal briquettes, which are becoming more popular in Asia, are made using extrusion machines. 
These machines push the charcoal mixture through a die, forming long rods with a hole in the middle, which are then cut to size. The hexagonal design isn't just for looks. The hole running through the center improves airflow, helping the briquette burn more efficiently and stay lit longer, something backyard grillers and restaurant chefs both appreciate. Freshly molded briquettes are still wet and fragile. To make them durable enough for packaging and transport, they must be dried. This is usually done in large drying ovens where hot air circulates through the briquettes, reducing their moisture content to around 5%. Once complete, the briquettes harden into solid blocks that can be handled without crumbling. They're then cooled, screened to remove any broken pieces or dust, and finally sent off for packaging. After testing, the briquettes are packed in paper or plastic bags, sometimes with a layer of wax-coated paper inside to keep moisture out. These bags are then sealed and shipped off to stores, ready for backyard barbecues, restaurant grills, and even industrial furnaces. Beyond cooking, charcoal briquettes have a fascinating role in sustainability. Because they can be made from recycled wood waste and agricultural byproducts, they help reduce deforestation and make use of materials that would otherwise go to waste. Some newer types even replace traditional wood with coconut shells, a renewable resource that produces less smoke and ash. It's also worth noting how efficient briquettes have become. Thanks to modern production methods, they can burn longer and more evenly, using less material for the same amount of heat. That's why they've remained the preferred fuel for grilling, decades after they were first commercialized by Henry Ford, who originally made them from sawdust left over from car factories. So next time you fire up the grill, Take a moment to look at those little black briquettes and appreciate the journey they've been through. From discarded wood scraps to carbonized charcoal, from a sticky paste to perfectly shaped fuel, every piece has been engineered for one simple purpose, to give you steady, reliable heat. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below will be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.